Welcome to CS11. Uh, this is our second half of our first lecture where we talk about the tools and technology that we're going to use um, in this class. Uh, primarily, that will be a native uh, text editor. Uh, by native, I mean if you're running on Windows, that you're going to use a Windows text editor. And if you're running on OS X, then you'll use an OS X text editor. Um, we'll talk more about text editors coming up. And we're also going to use the Unix command line, uh, where we'll actually compile and run and test our programs. Uh, if you're running on OS X, then you uh, already um, have a Unix uh, command line, um, just by opening a regular terminal window, like I've done here. Uh, if you're running on uh, Windows, then you're going to need to install an emulator. And the emulator that um, I'm going to have you install is called Sigwin. And um, doing so is, is uh, somewhat complicated, probably amongst the more complicated programs to install and configure on Windows. And so uh, there's a link uh, here to a very nice guide written by Ed Parrish um, that walks you through uh, installing and configuring and then testing your Sigwin installation. And I, um, um, so you should use those uh, directions uh, to do that. Okay, so let's talk about the um, uh, various pieces of the uh, programming uh, puzzle. So the first thing is that as a programmer, you're going to create a file um, in written in the C++ language. This is known as the source code or a program source. Now, believe it or not, C++ is a language designed for human beings, and the computer doesn't actually uh, understand it. And so in order for the uh, computer to uh, uh, be able to actually run and execute that program, it needs to be translated using a tool known as a compiler. Um, and so um, that process of compiling the program um, results in an executable program. And by default, the name of that executable program is going to be a.out on uh, um, the Unix systems and a.exe if you're running Sigwin. Now, uh, when you install uh, Sigwin, one of the things it will do is install a compiler for you. If you're running on OS X, um, you'll need to install uh, Xcode. Now, even though we won't be using Xcode in this class, um, the process of um, installing Xcode from the um, uh, App Store will um, bring in the uh, compiler and the programming tools that you need in addition to Xcode itself. So you're going to either install Xcode or follow the directions for installing Sigwin, including a C++ compiler uh, that I've mentioned previously. Okay, so in order to write the source code, we need a program called a text editor. And a text editor is not the same thing as a word processor. Uh, a word processor is a program designed to write text formatted for human beings and includes things like fonts and um, uh, typefaces, uh, uh, bold and italics, uh, paragraphs, indentation, and so on. Uh, none of that is um, needed. In fact, any of that will prevent your source code from being understood by a, um, the compiler, which needs just plain raw text. So a text editor is a program to um, edit uh, text that's primarily designed for use by a computer. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the, uh, a text editor called Text Wrangler, which is a free a text editor for OS X, and um, I'll also recommend a uh, program called TextPad um, for um, use on Windows. So either one of these will work fine, and there are many other text editors. And if you have questions about other text editors or want to recommend other text editors, for example, Notepad++ is popular also on Windows, um, we can um, have that discussion uh, online. Uh, it is important to um, uh, use a uh, text editor, though, and one that's designed for um, writing programs. I would like to mention that um, I don't want you to use a uh, full IDE, such as Eclipse or Xcode. 
So use of, of those uh, programs is, is uh, not allowed for this class. And the reason is they do include a text editor and, uh, of course, many other features, wonderful features. I mean, these are great programs. The reason that I don't want you to use them is because they do um, so much of the coding for you and they offer you so much help that it makes it, can make it very difficult to learn um, a programming. If the tool is doing most of the work for you, and anyways, it's much harder to learn the basic concepts. And there's plenty of time to learn and use these programs um, after you've had a couple of semesters of, of programming already. And that's really the appropriate time to begin to use a tool like that. All right. <clears throat> so uh, you can uh, go ahead and pause the video if and uh, install and configure um, SIGWIN. Um, and um, uh, after you've done that, uh, you can come back and continue um, to follow this video. All right. So at this point now, I'm assuming that you've got SIGWIN um, installed and configured, or that you've uh, been able to uh, open a terminal window, and so that you're ready there. All right, yeah, you're going to need a text editor. Um, I mentioned uh, either TextPad or Text Wrangler. Um, I've gone ahead and downloaded and installed Text Wrangler, and I have a window open, and we're ready to um, write our very first uh, computer program. And the program that we're going to write is called Hello World. It's a traditional program written in a new programming language when you learn it. And the purpose of this program is to print out a um, greeting. Okay, so here we go. And we're typing pound include io stream using namespace standard, it's written std int main and opening curly brace and a closing curly brace to match it and then inside we'll say C out and then we have uh, two greater than signs written together that's known as the stream insertion operator we'll talk about that and of course all of the things that I'm typing we'll be talking about over the course of the semester so that we understand um, what it is that we're doing okay end L for end line, okay, and then we'll say return zero. Okay, so this is the text of our very first uh, computer program, and uh, it's about as simple as it gets in C++. Um, and you may even be able to, just by looking at the program, get some idea of what it's going to do. Of course, I did tell you what it was going to do. It was going to print out a greeting message. Okay, so now I need to save this file, and um, C++ programs uh, will normally have the extension .cpp. So this program here should end in a .cpp, should be lowercase, um, extension. And so let's do that. Um, so here I'll select Save, and I will save it on the desktop. I'm going to get rid of the... Um, uh, .txt extension because we need the extension to be .cpp and I will call it hello.cpp. We need to decide where to save it. Uh, I'm going to do my work on the uh, desktop as a convenient place to save and work on my files. If you're working in SIGWIN, you'll probably find it much easier to not save your files on the desktop, but instead to save it inside the SIGWIN installation itself. Um, look for a folder called home that's inside of your SIGWIN uh, directory, and then there should be some folders in there, and I think one of them would probably be a good place to save your work. Um, for the uh, encoding, if you get a choice like this, um, what we need is plain, regular ASCII text, unformatted. Um, cannot be rich text. Don't save it as an RTF or anything like that. Uh, Unicode UTF-8 will work, um, as that's um, um, regular um, ASCII. Um, so of these choices here, um, I think UTF-8 is what you're going to want. Um, here I have a choice for line breaks, too. Uh, I'm going to set it for um, Unix and um, line feeds. Uh, if you have any problems with your program, um, see if you can uh, um, change that setting also. Okay, so I'm ready to go ahead and save my program. And 
show up on the desktop. Now I've got most of the desktop covered, so you won't be able to uh, um, see it. Um, let's see, maybe if I move this one out, out of there, you can see there's the file that I just saved. Okay, now um, what I need to do is take my command line, so that's this terminal here, and uh, change my working directory so that it's set to the desktop. The uh, command line interfaces, like we see here in the terminal, or like you'll see when you open a Sigwin window, allow us to type commands. And those commands uh, affect a default location, and I want to make sure that the default location, also known as the current directory or the working directory, uh, matches the desktop. And I can do that with the command cd, which changes the directory you're working in, desktop. Uh, and so now uh, my program is set to the desktop. Um, once again, if you're using Sigwin, it's probably easier to figure out where your um, command line opens up and save the file directly to there, rather than saving the file somewhere and then moving the terminal to where the file is. So you'll need to get those two things in sync. Um, okay, now if I do the command ls for list files, you can see the files and you should be able to see and verify that the file that you saved um, is right there. So I see it right there. Okay, so now we're ready to um, compile the program. We're going to be using the uh, compiling command G++, um, the plus plus for C++, and this will compile the program, and we can give it some settings, such as minus wall, with a capital W, that stands for give us all of the warnings, minus pedantic, so that will... Um, um, those two settings work together and will um, give us more feedback than you might normally get when you're compiling a program. And when you're um, learning to program, having that little bit of extra information is, um, is useful, so I recommend doing that. And then type in the name of the program that you want to compile. So um, here my final line is going to read G++ minus wall minus pedantic hello.cpp and I'll hit enter. And at that point um, hopefully one of two things will happen and that is that your program will either uh, compile and an, uh, a uh, executable will be generated and the name of that executable will either be a.out or a.exe or you'll get some errors um, and the program won't compile and then you'll need to fix those mistakes before the program will compile. Or even a third thing here, um, which is that you'll get some warnings on your program and um, that um, uh, your program will still compile, but then you will probably want to go ahead and fix those. So notice here I'll do ls to list the files again. And notice here I also have the a.out. That's my executable program that I can actually run. And notice down here I see that an icon for that now on my desktop. Okay, well, what does this warning mean here that I got? And it says, warning, no new line at end of file. And um, here it shows us that the error was generated at line 8. And this means uh, the uh, second character over. So if we go and look at the program itself, um, notice here on line 8, um, I have a um, the last line of, of the program. And that is actually a problem. Um, a line of text always has to enter with a uh, end with a carriage return and so here I'll hit return and now I'll save the program again and so whether it's a program or a data file you don't ever want to end abruptly on the um, last line um, so you always want the last line to be blank. Let me save it and now let's compile the program again now both in Sigwin and in the terminal there's many shortcuts that make your um, command uh, commands easier to uh, work with and one thing that you can do with the arrow keys is scroll through the previous command history so rather than retyping G++ minus wall and so on I can hit the up arrow um, and step through the previous commands and find the one that I want and hit enter again and notice this time the param compiled and we didn't get any output at all that we saw this is the kind of the Unix philosophy. If there's no particular message to deliver to you, then it will tell you nothing. So in this case, because the command worked and we got the executable that we expected, it didn't need to tell us anything. And if I verify, I can see that the um, file is there. Now, in order to run it, 
I need to do the command dot slash and then the file name, a.out. And I'll hit enter. And there the program has run and we can see the output of the program. All right, now let's do just a couple of more things. Let's say that we have made a mistake during the editing of our program. So let's make a typo and I'll go ahead and save that. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and recompile the program. And this time I'll get an error message. And notice this time it says error, not warning. And it says use of undeclared identifier, C-O-U-M-T. And we have a problem it says here on line six. Now that may or may not be the line that actually caused the error. That's the line where it, the compiler realized there was an error. And for many of our simple programs, that will take us right to the error here. Um, and so um, we would need to then look at our program um, starting at line six and see if we can figure out what the um, problem is based on the error message that we got here. And so we change that to say C out and I'll go ahead and save the program and then recompile the program and then run it again. And here I'm using the arrow keys both up and down to scroll through the command history. And there we have our working program. Okay, well, that completes our brief tour of the um, tools and technology that we're going to be using in this class. And of course, we'll be talking a lot more about um, programming in C++ uh, throughout the sem semester. Thank you.